welcome to insight builder channel and a third video in a series of discussions where we were working to understand to extract data and we are going to use rasa chatbot that is data bot for that we had been uh, discussing about uh, how to enable api endpoints from the rasa chatbot and also we were trying to understand how to use duckling entity extractor and all those stuff but now the question was always in my mind that where the user input that is the input that the user is chatting with the chatbot or the sentences or the statements that the user is giving the dialogue that the user is having where is it getting stored okay what i found is that it is actually taken care by by an object called as tracker and uh, it does not store the information or the data that the user is providing to the chatbot by default so what i mean by this so i was uh, trying to understand how these tracker stores are working uh, just give me a moment let it load and these tracker stores are uh, uh, kind of a small databases that keep the dialogue that is happening between you or the user and the chatbot by default it's a in memory tracker store is what gets enabled in the rasa chatbot and these in memory chatbots uh, sorry the in, in memory tracker stores the history is lost if you restart the rasa server so that's when i realized okay we need to go for some other tracker stores and uh, to my uh, surprise there is not one tracker store there are lots and lots of tracker stores it, to begin with there is sql tracker store and uh, follows with uh, mongo tracker store redis tracker store there are lots of things you can actually connect with uh, dynamo also you can connect with even con custom tracker stores here what we are going to discuss is very simple we are going to discuss the sql tracker store inside sql we have three options we have uh, postgres we have oracle and we have sqlite the most splendid database that i have ever come across is sqlite 3 you know why because it comes bundled in along with python so if you have got python installed then nothing to worry sqlite 3 is also installed along with that so okay so we have the database ready with us then what stopping us from trying it out then why uh, there is in memory tracker store why rasa chatbot server is not using the existing sql tracker store directly the reason is not very clear i did not do the research on that part but they have given a good uh, documentation where i can directly start using the sql tracker store so for that i need to go to the endpoints.yaml file i need to copy this particular code and i need to make some changes so let's go to the uh, this is a server that's already running i am going to go to the vim where i am modifying the uh, endpoints.yaml file so the endpoints.yaml file is already open here if you have been following the various uh, discussions till now you know that this is the last part of the discussion here uh, you don't need to touch you don't need to uncomment any of the existing tracker store details because we are not going to use any of those you must be already having the action endpoint uncommented because it's an action server so the rasa core server has to connect with the action server so this will be already uncommented you need to come down to the end of the endpoint and then you need to paste whatever you copied from here so whatever you copied from here just paste it here and then you need to start changing it so first and foremost you need to change the dialect it has to be sqlite 3 and then you need to make the database name so this is the database name that you are going to use or the path so if you don't give a path then the database will be located in the same place where the server is running so now where is that that is the place where you have the data bot folder so let us go to the data bot folder and let us just a minute yeah so here we are going to go to the data bot folder it all these uh, discussions and uh, the code etc will be shared with you guys in the uh, description below so nothing to worry about and if you do an ls here you'll see that there is a rasa.db so once the server starts up and running and uh, there is a way to start the server i will be explaining to you this rasa.db gets generated by default you don't need to do anything you don't need to give any path 
uh, nothing no setting is required in this case if you are going to use sqlite 3 but if you are going to use postgres or oracle you need to set up the database in the backend and you need to provide the necessary connection links meaning let me go back to the vim you have to give the database name so that you set up inside the uh, postgresql or oracle you need to provide the url also username and password by default you will have to provide and the query don't touch this as of now just leave it as my driver only i had a challenge when i uh, when i initially tried to understand sqlite uh, tracker store sql tracker stores that i was trying to change this uh, my driver string you don't need to actually touch this this my driver string this is an yaml file so my driver will be a string and it will be considered the same way when the python or the chatbot framework reads this so i was a little bit confused there but uh, you don't need to touch this as of now don't worry about that once you are going to go for oracle or postgresql you might have to uh, create some more additional strings there but here you don't need to touch it once this is uh, this particular endpoints.yaml file is updated then you need to start the chatbot server so to start the chatbot server what we do is usually uh, if you are if you are going to chat, uh, start the rasa server we say rasa run and then we don't do anything further you actually if you are going to enable api you are going to directly enable the api so let me do one thing let me do uh, clear the screen and then say rasa run endpoint so what you will do is you will not have any of these switches you will not have the debug you will not have the endpoints uh, you will not have any of these things you will by default run without without any of the switches so you will say rasa run and the moment you say rasa run the rasa server starts getting updated and it loads the model and does everything but it will not store the uh, events data I'll be showing you the events data in a couple of minutes, but it will not store the events data and it will not have the database also. So let me first of all uh, stop this server again for a moment and let me do an ls. I'm going to do an rm that is remove the rasa database. So I'm going to remove this particular rasa database that you saw here. If you do an ls right now, it's missing. And if I do a rasa run, you'll see that it does not get created again. The reason why I'm running this couple of times is that you guys have to understand what goes on whenever a particular command is triggered. So now the server is starting. I have not initiated the endpoints along with the server. So it's not going to trigger it. So uh, the server is up and running and uh, I'm going to do a uh, cancel. And if you see that the Rasa DB that it has got created, it has got created, but it will not store the events. In order for the rasa to store the events, you need to start the server with the endpoints that we created, the endpoints.yaml file. Also, we need to enable API if you are going to connect it and uh, connect it to the front end. So this is by default, it's required and you can debug it also. And once you do this, now whenever you do any of the activity on this particular server, it will, the events will get logged into the SQLite database. So here, we are going to see that so uh, now if you see i have this rasa underscore database here i have to do sqlite 3 rasa.db it will be inside here and if i do tables you will see there is one table and if i do select star from events sorry about that You'll see there is no data here how to get the data into this for this let's actually go to HTTP. so let's go here and i already have this uh, uh, http application that's running here so i'm going to send a request right now i've already enabled api so it's not a problem so whatever request i'm sending it from here through this particular web hooks will actually go to the local host server so if you guys have been following my earlier videos you know that I already set up this variable here. Let's go back here. And uh, in in the Rasa server that you saw that something has happened here and <coughs> excuse me, the, the tracker has updated. So 
the tracker has seen there is a sender called test user and he has sent some data and also if you go up you will see that the entire process from the beginning to the end is getting blocked so here the ticket is getting issued for the test user and it is getting blocked and after this the entire process starts the tracker is one of the important object that maintains the state of the chatbot and also it maintains the various data that the chatbot is providing let us go to the sqlite now let us do sql events and you are surprised that the moment ago there was no data but now there is so much data and you will see that there is almost 10 rows of data so what's happening here what happens is rasa chatbot each and every step of the action there are multiple actions involved in this particular chatbot each and every action step is uh, logged as a separate uh, uh, row inside the sql table or the database table and that is how you are seeing all this information here the last step that we were trying to get so this is the text that we got output so you see this text here from here to here the info at business.com the phone number etc so these and the number so you will see that in this location let's go to the chat data so the same thing you see the phone number here the number 56 and the info at business.com so all these things comes from that uh, particular uh, uh, chatbot and all this output is already stored in the database so now you know how the entire process works and how the tracker is storing the uh, user data and uh, maintaining it uh, in the backend so once you uh, shut down the server and if you don't delete this database it will not it will not uh, the data will not be lost so let's try this so let us uh, close the server and if i close the server and if i come back again uh, let me open this here sqlite 3 and uh, if i say rasa db and you will see that let me do select from events and you see that the data is still there so even closing down the server does not lead to data loss so i believe that you have understood where the user queries and the chatbot outputs go right now and how to store it in the database i believe that you like this video do leave a like share it with others and subscribe to my channel for further updates and similar kind of discussion on not just rasa chatbot framework but on the entire open source ecosystem with that said i would like to leave this video with four words that is practice 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 see you guys have a great time